All right, I'm back again. Guess what? I went to some online class and they said that you like videos shorter, like students don't like to watch long videos. And so that's why I'm making a lot of shorter videos. Hopefully you find them easier to re uh, watch so that you don't have to sit there for 15 minutes in front of a video and get bored and space out. So hope it's working. All right, in the last video, I came up with these equations for rotational motion when the, the angular acceleration was constant. And my question was that these should look really familiar to you, um, hopefully, because if you really start to think about it, they really have exactly the same format that our equations for constant linear acceleration had when we studied that way back in chapter two or three. I think it was three. Um, so I want to show you how, um, how we can actually prove that to ourselves by thinking about how the linear quantities and the um, angular quantities are related to each other. So we're going to get this picture again up here of this object that is rotating. So now I want you to think about the fact that as point P moved, so let's think about the fact that originally point P was on the x-axis and as the object was rotating, point P moved up to the location that you see it at right now. Now as it did that, its angular displacement would be measured by the angle theta, but its linear displacement is measured by the arc length S. Now it turns out that the way that those two terms are related is that the arc length S is equal to the radius, which would be the distance from the center of rotation, it's just the radius, to the point times the angle theta. And so what's gonna happen is all our linear quantities are gonna be related to angular quantities by a factor of the radius. So if we could think of S really taking the place of say X or Y, but S makes more sense because the displacement um, in translational um, motion is more like it's a curved arc, so S kind of is more appropriate to name it. And then the angular displacement is theta, but the difference between them is a factor of r. Now, something that I didn't mention is we measure our angle theta in radians. We don't use degrees. And radians are kind of weird because technically it's not really a unit. It's unitless. And so if I take the angle theta and I multiply it by the radius, which is going to be measured in units of distance, the two of these multiplied together will give something measured in units of distance, like meters. And that's the kind of measurement we expect for the arc length. So I think using the units is always really helpful. If you can't remember, do I divide by r or multiply by r, let the units help you out there. Now, if I look at velocity, which is ds dt, you know, how fast is this thing going linearly? They have the velocity you know, indicated here of point P, of course, it's tangent to the circular path. Um, we would do dr dt times theta plus r times d theta dt. But the thing is, oh, I forgot um, dr dt times theta, sorry. This is zero because the radius is constant. So this is just equal to r d theta dt, which is just r times omega. Again, the velocity, the translational velocity, v, is equal to the angular velocity, omega, times the radius. And then we could do it again if we took the acceleration, which was dv dt, and remembering that the r is constant, it would be just r times d omega dt, which is just equal to r times alpha. So all the linear quantities are found by taking their angular equivalents and multiplying by the radius that is going from the axis of rotation to where you're looking at, the point that you're looking at. You could then see that if I take all of these uh, equations, the first two, 
If I multiply every term by r, I'm going to get here, v is equal to v naught plus at. Here I'll get s is equal to s naught plus v naught t plus one half at squared. Here I got to multiply both sides by r squared because of these guys and because I have two angular terms. And I get two times the acceleration is equal to s minus s naught, and that's equal to v squared minus v naught squared. And so that is how the angular and the linear quantities are related.